everyone, and welcome to episode 56 of the 10 Minute Modeling Challenge. Last week I mentioned about the challenge that's going on this month, and if you missed that one, check out the Discord server, link in the description, and then you can uh, participate if you want. We're making city blocks. So I'm not going to be going through those this week, but I might have a peek next week, or maybe I'll save it until the end of the challenge so far. I'm not pretty, I'm not pretty sure. <laughs> that, that's not even a way to say it. Anyway, this week I'm going to be modeling something that was requested plenty of times last year, but I never got around to model it. I don't know why, maybe I just ignored all the requests, or maybe I didn't quite feel like it, but now I do. A sci-fi rifle it is, I'm going to be using a low poly modeling approach, but if you wanted to apply the same approach, you could go high poly with this thing, you could just keep modeling past the 10 minutes, refine it, maybe bevel edges, uh, add some a lot more detail, maybe break out some sections of the weapon, so you have uh, like, a, I don't know, like a reload mechanism, or a bolt, or the trigger, or whatever. But I'm gonna do it as a solid piece probably, and uh, you can take it from there if you wanna get inspired. But remember, this is not a tutorial. This is just me challenging yourself and dragging you along through the process. But I'm quite happy that a lot of you find it uh, tutorial-like. Some people have even played it in slow motion. And uh, I don't know if there are anyone out there that plays it at double speed, that would be cool too. Anyway, let's get started. I'm gonna press uh, the record button now. I'm not even gonna stress on this one. Hope that's okay with you because, I mean, I can't really fail making a low poly uh, sci-fi rifle. No one knows what it looks like. And uh, I could just say I'm finished. So I don't think I'm gonna be missing this deadline. We'll find out. Ready, one more time. Steady, go. And we're off nearly. I've done this a few times. I missed the uh, start button. So I've like gone halfway through and then I checked down for the timer and it's not even running. Ready, steady, go. And we're off, yes. Uh, I'll do auto mirror as usual. And uh, go to preferences, add-ons, if you want to add on that one. It's included by default. S to scale it down. Probably won't get the scale right, but I can always rescale later if necessary. Start here by the bot. E to extrude, S to scale, of course. But I'll just scale, I think, on the Z. So I'll press Z here as well, maybe like this. All right, and uh, E to extrude, or E to extrude this one, S to scale it down, move it up. And then I'll do Control R here. I'm gonna make these uh, little sci-fi looking handles. I think they, like, I don't know why, but it feels like it should be connected together here. So I'll do E to extrude again, G, and then uh, E to extrude again. And then let's get a handle going down here. So E to extrude, S to scale, R to rotate, G, E to extrude. And I can refine details here a bit. And then Control plus, actually, I want to move this up. And for the handle here, I'm going to like link it up here with this again. So I connect the loop, loop the loop. That's a bit of a thick handle, but never mind. You can fix that. Uh, bridge, right click there and bridge faces. That should be pretty good, I think. Control R, loop cut this one. Control R, loop cut this one. Shift select these faces and then slide it in. You need to be able to grip this thing, I guess. That's a little bit better, I guess. So that's the handle done. So let's go here. Uh, already 8.30, What? Oh, I'm saying 8.27 on the clock. G to move this. Let's cut the, maybe the pivot point right there. All right, now we'll just keep this going. E to extrude. And then this is going to be a sci-fi thing. I can't possibly fail, can I? Or I could, but I hopefully won't. <laughs> S to scale. I'm going to make it thick here in the front as well. For some reason, they always look... Uh, I don't know why they don't do more efficient weaponry in the future, but... Time will tell. Uh, G to move that one. And then E to extrude. Maybe we'll do it really thick like this. Actually, I want even thicker, I think. So scale, I'll scale it up even more. Let's see what this happens. <laughs> Let's see what happens. E to extrude. E to extrude. S to scale that on. G to move it. Control R. Loop cut this whole thing to there. Why is that not cutting past here? Have I got duplicate? Oh, I've got all sorts of double vertices here, I think. Oh, okay. A, M, and then merge by distance. Four removed. I had some double stuff there. I should actually do that before I do the loop cut then. So A to select everything. M by distance, now the control R loop cut works. So we'll move it to there, and then uh, I'll do some features here, control R, maybe we'll do, let's see, so one, two, three, like this, scale on the Y axis, slide this down, I'll alt and shift select on the edge there for loop select, I to inset, B to get the boundary in the center there, alt S to scale these down, don't know why, but this looks a little bit like sci-fi, I think I did that for some previous weapons in the past, so. All right, here I'm gonna also do, uh, let's tie this together as well for the little trigger point. So maybe I'll do, uh, 
select this edge there somewhere here there g to move that one down and here we'll make some room for a trigger i'm gonna do some magazine type of thing here as well maybe we'll do a, a whole slot here for the mag it's gonna be a big thing e to extrude again they had no sense of uh, efficiency in the future for making these things <laughs> so maybe i'll just connect okay g to move this one down and then shift select this one right click bridge faces control r control r for loop cuts and then i'll just alt and shift select on that edge scale shift y scale on everything except the y-axis there so that's going to be where the trigger can be we can put that in later on here we'll just put a really thick magazine i think so i'll do i to inset there and then E to extrude this in. It's a big slot there for it. And then here I'll just create some sort of a, I'll duplicate this face here. We've got 546 on the clock there. Shift D to duplicate it, S to scale it. We can bring it in to there maybe. Move it up and then let's see, E to extrude, G to move, R to rotate. Control R, let's put some loop cuts here as well. Make it look like it's got some uh, grooves in it. I to inset, uh, S to scale these down, Alt S to scale them down individually more. That's it, okay, let's put some more features. We've got 512. So I'm just gonna put some uh, feature here. I have no idea what this is, but let's I to inset this one, E to extrude it. Again, uh, luckily enough, no one knows what a sci-fi rifle really looks like. We have to have uh, something here in the front, like a something where the whatever it is that is shooting. Maybe it's rays or something. Uh, scale that up a little bit, E to extrude, I to inset, and then E to extrude this one in. That looks a bit like a BB gun, but never mind. Uh, and here, maybe we'll have something here. I don't know what this is either. Maybe there's some sort of a launcher of some sort. So A to select everything, G. I'll make it a little bit dark, I think. And then uh, Control plus here, make that nearly black. I don't really have fully black there, but. Right, I'm gonna raise this up as well to give it a little bit of a profile. So I'll select this one, control select this one, and then move this up to there. And then alt select these loops, and then uh, should we do blue feature? Like a light blue thing. That could be pretty cool. And then uh, we'll do some more features here maybe. I think I wanna shrink this down a little bit. So I'll shift select these, scale Z. We can put a, like a scope here as well. I think I'll raise this up as well. So to there. And then Shift D to duplicate that face. This is my favorite thing to do, duplicating faces here. E to extrude, L to select the length down to here. E to extrude, S to scale, S to scale on the X axis, E to extrude. And I'll just do like a, some sort of a E to extrude, S to scale. Uh, scale Y, E to extrude that on. And then we'll do E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude and it's low poly remember <laughs> e to extrude s to scale e to extrude and then maybe we'll do control r i can do here though and bring that out and then i'll do can i shift and ring select that no but i can do hold the control key and select around here i'm gonna try to raise it up a little bit so i get and then scale on the z axis only so that's a bit rounder a little uh, look through hole here. E to extrude that on in. S to scale that down. G to move it to darker. Okay, so 248. Time's really flying here. Maybe we'll do the magazine. Put some different color on that on. G to move it to maybe a lighter gray should it be. Stick to the groove color here. Maybe blue features on that one as well. Darker. And then here I'll, I'll just do some intricate design here. <laughs> e extrude that on maybe we'll oh no i think i want to do some feature here coming through like this i to inset like this i to inset again alt s to scale it down if i can yeah maybe we'll bring this down i to inset just there put like a groove in there some orange light in there for some reason here we'll do more features, I to inset, E to extrude. You can just go crazy with this. This is pretty cool, I think. You can just uh, like just imagine that there are some vents or whatever, <laughs> whatever could be suitable on a 
weapon like this. Uh, e to extrude that one in. Maybe we'll do this one a bit darker. Or that can be the blue as well, the blue color. I have no idea what this is. I'm sort of a power generator. <laughs> L. And let's see. L to select those links. Maybe a little bit brighter scope there. Okay, 127. I'm just going to go. Like I said, I don't think I can really fail because it could be theoretically finished right now. <laughs> I to inset. E to extrude that one in. S to scale that one. Maybe we'll do some I to inset there. S to scale that down. Control R. Loop cut there, control R, maybe we'll do ring select there, Alt E, extrude long face normals, control plus, shift select these, make this one a bit darker. Maybe we'll bring this in so it's got some sort of a C, Alt Z, C through, one to get the vertex, and G to move these in. Maybe I'll R to rotate this, Alt Z, and then here some weird grooves as well. Don't know if it's so ergonomic this thing. <laughs> I to inset. I to inset again. Alt S to scale these down. Maybe some uh, space anything. 30 seconds to go. More features. I'll just do I to inset this. Alt E to extrude long face normals. Shift select these. Make that darker for some weird reason. I to inset this. E to extrude down. Some uh, utility, like accessory thing. E to extrude that one up. Maybe something here as well. I to inset. Alt E to extrude long face normals. Five seconds to go. I to inset. And Alt E to extrude long face normals. That's it. Time's up. Can't touch this thing anymore now. I always forget to switch this off. Dismiss. So we've got uh, some weapon here. I don't know if you'll be able to fit a hand in here. <laughs> See, shift right click to get rid of that thing. This one should have probably been, uh, I could have done I to inset, E to extrude that one. So it looked a little bit better. You know what? I'm going to cheat this time. I'm going to do it. So you can uh, complain in the comments if you want. That'll add some activities to the video. So call me a cheater if you want. Do you know what? For the bonus material, I might try to stick this in the hand of one of my characters. And it's a low poly character, so I don't really have to be so fuzzy. You'll just basically have like a, a cube blob as a hand anyway. So it just needs to be in this region. The detail uh, when it's going to be this small doesn't really matter. Let's see where we need the pivot point on this thing now. I think it's pretty good that it's right where the main hand is going to be that's holding the weapon. So I think the pivot point is pretty good where it is. Uh, I'll just do double check shift C to center the cursor there to the center and then we'll do uh, let's see shift or no right click set origin origin to 3d cursor and then uh, I'm just going to export this thing now export fbx and I'll do selected objects only and we'll do apply scalings fbx unit scale and then we'll do apply transform so that rotation ends up correct. And I've been working on this little low poly fighter uh, that you've probably seen in some video clips in the past time from a platformer I was uh, thinking about making. So I'm going to put uh, in weapons here. We'll put him in domain here. He's going to have some FBX files here. We'll do uh, sci-fi rifle and export this thing. So I've got this uh, little project here. So you might have seen it in one of the intros. Space fire. Got the recoil thing and this is using the uh, rigging package so i'm going to be trying to just import this new rifle that we've got the reason why i've got this little project here is because uh, i wanted to make a tutorial but i need to learn this good enough so i can actually do a, a meaningful tutorial that's why i haven't released it yet so i need to get back to this sci-fi rifle let's bring it in it's invisible why is it invisible oh i didn't have it selected when i exported it <sniffs> rookie mistake let's do it again so i exported nothing Export, FBX, Selected Objects, Unit Scale, Apply Transform, Sci-Fi Rifle. Export. Now we should see. Ooh, there we go. That's one big rifle. All right, it's way too big, so let's make it smaller, actually. I should really rescale this side. <laughs> this is one big rifle. This is one meter. Okay. Tab into edit mode. It's like a rifle for giants. S to scale it down to maybe, I guess it should be all the way this. I mean, this is one meter here, so maybe that'll do. Control A and apply this scale here. And then we'll export this thing again. I could scale it in Unity, but it's pretty good to make a habit out of creating objects in the correct scale. 
it's always beneficial because you don't necessarily want to scale it in the game engine because any children of that game object, if you had like a scope on it, would also be scaled. All right, I need to bring this, uh, the, this texture of mine into the scene as well. So check out the description for the download of this little palette file here, and then you can just drag this into texture. But we need to do a few things. See that it's blurry here. It's really small, so you can't really see it, but this needs to be changed. So from bilinear to point, and from compression here to none, otherwise it'll stay blurry. Now we've just made it crisp and clear here. And this already got the, the correct material pretty much there. It's auto imported. But I, usually I want to create my own materials anyway instead of relying on the automatically imported. So I'm going to re right click here, create material, and let's call it sci fi rifle. Select that one and then drag this palette into the base map and then drag this material onto sci fi rifle. It's just so I can control the smoothness here if I wanted to. Uh, uh, change the shine a little bit instead of using the automatically imported one. So I'll stick it in the same place, I think, where the rotate... Or, oh yeah, E to rotate in here. Catastrophe. We'll put it there. W to move it. All right, and now we have to realize how uh, I did this thing. I can't even remember how to do it. So let's see. We've got uh, Domain here. That's the name of this character. Rigs, Weapons, Minigun, and... That is the actual minigun, yeah, I think. Okay, so I imported the sci-fi rifle into my Unity project where I'm fiddling around with this uh, little uh, robot looking guy. And uh, I've uh, modified the minigun rig that I had and then uh, adapted it a little bit so it would work with the sci-fi rifle. But there's still a lot of tweaking to be done, to be honest, uh, it doesn't really look that natural. I had to rescale the sci-fi rifle down a little bit as well, make it 80% uh, of the original size, so I'd probably re-export that one to get the correct size. And then uh, it would require a lot of tweaking when it comes to the positioning of the grips and also making sure that it doesn't poke through. And we had some elbow problems here when I rotate the, the, the aiming point so it uh, doesn't look that natural when it flips the elbow like this, but all of that could probably be tweaked. But what I need to learn the rigging uh, package a little bit better so I can uh, create some tutorials about that. That's my goal for it. If you want to have a play around with this before I get around to creating a tutorial, check out the animation rigging package in Unity and uh, Brackies also did a tutorial. So search for animation rigging Brackies and there's uh, not too far of a distant uh, tutorial on this topic. I actually checked that one out myself to get started. So uh, check that one out in the meantime. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Hit the like button if you liked the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And come back next week for another 10-minute modeling challenge video. Take care. Bye for now.